everyone, I'm Nasis and welcome to my channel. I didn't do a video yesterday because it was Monday and I was feeling lazy. <laughs> Honestly, you know, if it's Monday, sometimes you'll feel lazy to do something or to work. Anyway, today I'm going to tell you some of the things that I've been doing here in Nigeria that people around me, people here in our house or Nigerians that experience to be with me or to stay with me find it weird. Yes, weird, strange, or unusual. If you watch my previous vlogs, I always tell the things that I found strange here in Nigeria because it's unusual for me. However, there are also things that I am doing here that for them it's unusual and it's strange. Okay, let's start. The first one, eating rice. Yes, I know that a lot of people eat rice. Even here in Nigeria, of course, there's rice here in Nigeria. If you want to eat stew, there must be a rice and you have to use rice for shell of rice and fried rice, right? But if you see a Filipino eating rice, you will find it maybe weird or let's say strange because Filipino like me can eat rice breakfast lunch, dinner, morning snacks, afternoon snacks, or even midnight snacks. Yes, that is true. So people here in the house, they know already that I like to eat rice. But if it's their first time to be with me, like example, our helper before when she was still new, or some of the relations of my husband, they were like, how can she eat rice with a goosey soup, with ora soup, with obono soup? Of course, you have to eat rice with stew. But I can eat rice with other soup as well. Even if you give me a bacha, I can eat a bacha with rice. So they find it really strange about me. That's why here in our house, if you go to our storage room, you will see two bags of rice or two socks of rice. From what I know, one sock is 50 kilos. So it means in this house, we have 100 kilos of rice. <laughs> it's all because of me. That's why here in this house, once I wake up in the morning, I'll go straight to the kitchen. I will check check the pots if there's any rice. If there's no rice, then I need to give instruction that they need to cook rice for me. Number two. Well, the second one is washing my hair. Well, I also know that you guys are also washing your hair. But me, I wash my hair every day. Sometimes two to three times a day. It depends on how many times I shower. Well, before when I was still new here, my first time I came here, we didn't have this house yet. So that time, we were staying in my in-law's house. That is my husband's grandmother's house maternal side. When I was there and it was my first time to be here and that was the first time that someone from the family brought a foreigner here in Nigeria. Actually, that was the most memorable vacation I ever had here in Nigeria because that time, a lot of people was with, I mean, cousins, uncles, aunties, they all came to see me. They stayed in that house because of me. So, it was so fun. And that time, I noticed that every time I shower, I take a bath because it's a house in the village and the bathroom is outside. There's no bathroom inside a bedroom like this our house. All bedroom have bathroom and toilet. So that house, the bathroom and toilet are outside. So every time I take a bath, I take a shower, once I go out, they're all looking at me <laughs> because of course I'm going to cover myself with a towel and I have another towel on top of my hair. So one time, there's one girl, the cousin of my husband, asked me, Auntie, you know here if you are an elder or you're older to someone, they will call you auntie or uncle. So she asked me, Auntie, why do you put towel on your head just like an Indian? <laughs> you know Indian, uh, some Indian wear turbans. So <laughs> that's how she described the towel on top of my head. So I said, oh no, I'm just doing that because my hair was still wet. 
Every time I shower, they will be looking at me. They will even watch me to dry my hair because sometimes I will go out from the room. I will go at the backyard and I will going to to dry my hair because after that I need to spread outside the towel that I use. But right now they are used to it. But those people that saw me for the first time doing that one because sometimes here in this house, once I shower, I will go out and they will see that my hair is wet. So if there is a guest or somebody that met me for the first time and saw that my hair is wet they usually ask me oh did you wash your hair so so i will say yes and i'm washing it every day they were like every day you're washing it every day yes sometimes two times or three times a day well let me clarify why it is strange for them because if you notice most of the women here even children they have attachment or they braid their hair like that okay so they braid their hair so that they can put attachment or they can put weave on extension or they will going to put wig so of course if your hair is braided it's not easy to wash that one and if they will going to wash it every day it will going to spoil immediately so it's not easy also if someone will going to braid your hair it will be very very painful but there was a time that they braid my hair but not really much i didn't allow them to put attachment or a for let's say i didn't allow them to do a formal hair braid to my hair <laughs> that's the only thing so even the one that they did to me it only lasted for a few hours because every time I sweat I feel itchy and every time you scratch um, of course it will go into spoil that's why sometimes I will see my sister-in-law doing like this like that so I was like why are you hitting your <laughs> yourself then she told me no my my head is itchy so she can't scratch because of the breed so she needs to do like this yeah <laughs> to ease the itchiness number three well third one is cooking indomie with soup or water okay here in nigeria if you say indomie it means instant noodles and the way they cook indomie here or instant noodles here are the same you will even see some people having that type of business they call it indomie business once they cook it they will going to boil the noodles and then drain it then after that they will going to stir fry the noodles with tomato egg onions and of course the flavorings Okay, so in the Philippines, we call that one pancit canton, but we have an instant noodles that is really meant for pancit canton. So the indomie that Nigerians have it, the way we cook it is we cook the noodles, of course, with water, boil it with water, and then we will not going to drain the water. So while it's boiling, we will going to put the seasonings and egg if you want. Then after that, we will eat it like that. So we will going to sip the water. <laughs> Something like that. So <laughs> usually we eat that one for breakfast or if someone is sick that is something that you know sick people ask to to eat because anyway it's easy to prepare and it's hot and it has the soup the water to sip or let's say to drink so the time that they noticed that that one is strange for them because there was a time i was cooking in dumi and of course i boiled it then after boiling i put the seasonings and i turn it then i put egg and my sister-in-law was just like looking at me staring at me even our helper and then she asked me are you not going to remove the water i said no 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 i don't want to remove the water and this is another strange things for them that i did okay while i was cooking the indomie it was boiling and of course i know that it's already cooked so i put the flavoring and i put egg look when i put the egg i didn't wait for the egg to be really super cooked i mean it seems like the egg is still raw something like that so it's not really done and my sister-in-law was like are you going to eat that egg like that it's not yet done i said yeah it's okay don't worry i'm not going to to die <laughs> eating this kind of egg 
So she was like, hmm, yes now. But I told her that honestly, my husband doesn't want me to eat raw egg. The egg is not really raw um, because I already put it into a hot soup. But it's how I'm going to say it. It's half done. Something like that. So it was strange for her. Okay. So the next one, number four. Okay. The fourth one is using chopping board. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that there are Nigerians that are using chopping board because we bought our chopping board in ShopRite here in Enugu. So for sure it's available here and for sure Nigerians are using it. But there are still a lot of Nigerians who are not using chopping board because they are used in slicing fruits, vegetables without chopping board. If they will going to slice uh, green leafy vegetables they will just do like this they will hold the vegetable and then this is the knife they will just do like that if you see them how they do it you will be amazed <laughs> if you're not used to it and even if they are slicing onions what they usually do while they are cooking I mean the food is already inside the pot and they're, they are in the middle of cooking the food and they will just get onions, wash it, remove the back, and then they will slice it like that on top of the pot. So everything that they slice will go, will go into shoot inside the pot. So that's how they actually do it here. Most of them are doing that one. So there was a time I bought the chopping board. It was my second vacation here in Nigeria and i've been using it and then someone saw the chopping board in the kitchen and she actually asked me what is this for so i said oh that one is chopping board and i need to show her how i'm using it so i will clarify that not everyone are using chopping boards so there are people that still find it strange if you will going to slice or cut any food vegetables or fruits or meat using chopping board here's how we do in the philippines um filipinos we have lots of filipino cuisines and different type of food or cuisine we have a different type of slicing it that's why we need a chopping board let's say i want to cook filipino adobo and filipino menudo those are the two types of cuisines that we have so if i want to cut the meat for adobo there's what we call adobo cut and if we want to cut or slice the meat for menudo menudo also have its own special slice that's why if you go to the supermarket in the philippines you will see the meat section they have pork menudo cut pork adobo cut pork machado cut so that's how we do we have different styles of cutting meat and vegetables if your mother will tell you come here slice these carrots you have to ask your mother what is she going to cook if she will tell you i want to cook Pancit. So you have to cut or slice the carrots pancit style. If you make mistake, if you cut the carrots anyhow, mm -hmm, your mother will going to scold you. <laughs> Number five, and this is the last. In this house, even if you go to other maybe Nigerian houses, once they eat rice, they usually eat it with only spoon. So spoon is okay for them. But here, now they are used to me already that every time I will eat rice, I need to eat it with spoon and fork. Yes, even if I go to the restaurant, sometimes they will only give me fork and knife, but I need to request for a spoon and fork. Actually, that is very, very Filipino. And we are also known of using fork and knife every time that we eat. So in this house if you will see in our kitchen we have lots of spoons but few forks <laughs> because honestly most of the time i'm the only one that is using the fork okay so that's all for now and thank you very much for staying with me if you didn't subscribe yet please subscribe and click the notification button so every time i'm going to bring out a new vlog then you will be notified so thank you very much and have a good night bye